Chapter Four of the Bobbsey Twins at School. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Rachel. The Bobbsey Twins at School by Laura Lee Hope. Chapter Four Home in an Auto. Down on his four legs dropped the big white dog, and with another wag of his fluffy tail he came straight for Flossie. "'Be careful,' warned Mamma Bobbsey. "'He won't hurt her,' declared Bert. "'That's a good dog. Anyone can tell that. "'Here, doggy, come here,' he called. But the dog still advanced toward Flossie, who shrank back a bit timidly. "'You never can tell what dogs will do,' said Mrs. Bobbsey. "'It is best to be careful.' "'I guess he knew what Flossie said to him,' spoke up Freddy. "'He knows we like dogs.' The dog barked a little, and coming up to where Flossie was, again stood on his hind legs. "'That's a queer trick,' said Mr. Bobbsey. "'I guess this dog has been trained. He probably belongs around here.' "'I wish he belonged to us,' sighed Nan. Like Flossie and Freddy, she too loved animals. "'Maybe we can keep him if we don't find Snoop,' suggested Freddy. "'Oh, Papa, will you get Snoop back?' And Freddy's voice sounded as though he was going to cry. "'Yes, yes, of course I will,' said Mr. Bobbsey quickly. He did not want the children to fret now, with still quite a distance yet to go home, and that in a trolley car. There were bundles to carry, weary children to look after, and Mrs. Bobbsey was rather tired also. No wonder Papa Bobbsey thought he had many things to do that night. "'Come along, children,' called Mrs. Bobbsey. "'It is getting late, and we are only about halfway to the trolley.' "'Oh, dear! If that circus had to be wrecked, I wish it could have waited until our train passed.' "'Are you very tired?' asked her husband. "'I can take that valise.' "'Indeed you'll not. You have enough.' "'Let me have it, Massa Bobbsey,' pleaded Dina. "'I ain't carrying half enough. It's powerful strong, I is.' "'Nonsense, Dina,' said Mr. Bobbsey. "'I can manage, and your arms are full.' "'I—I I wish she had Snoop,' said Freddy but he was so interested in watching the queer dog that he half forgot his sorrow over the lost cat. The dog seemed to have made great friends with Flossie. She was patting him on the head now, for the animal, after marching about on his hind legs, was down on all fours again. "'Oh, Mamma, he's awful nice!' exclaimed Flossie. "'He's just as gentle, and he's soft, like the little toy lamb I used to have.' "'Indeed, he does seem to be a gentle dog,' said Mrs. Bobbsey. "'But come along now. Don't pet him any more, or he may follow us. "'Flossie and whoever owns him would not like it. "'Come on.' "'Forward, march!' called Freddy, strutting along the moonlit path, "'as much like a soldier as he could imitate, tired as he was. "'The Bobbseys and their faithful Dina started off again "'toward the distant trolley that would take them to their home. "'The dog sat down and looked after them. "'I, I wish he was ours,' said Flossie wistfully, waving her hand to the dog. The Bobbseys had not gone on very far before Nan, looking back, called out, "'Oh, Papa, that dog is following us!' "'He is!' exclaimed Mr. Bobbsey. "'That's queer. He must have taken a sudden liking to us. But I guess he'll go back where he belongs pretty soon. Are you getting tired, little fat fireman? And you, my fat fairy?' "'Oh, no, Papa,' laughed Flossie. "'I sat down so much in the train that I'm glad to stand up now.' "'So am I,' said Freddy, who made up his mind that he would not say he was tired if his little sister did not. And yet, truth to tell, the little fat fireman was very weary. On and on went the Bobbsey family, and soon Bert happened to look back and gave a whistle of surprise. "'That dog isn't going home, Papa,' he said. "'He's still after us, and look, now he's running!' They all glanced back on hearing this. Surely enough the big white dog was running after them, wagging his tail joyfully and barking from time to time. "'This will never do!' exclaimed Mr. Bobbsey. "'Whoever owns him may think we are trying to take him away. "'I'll drive him back. "'Go home! "'Go back, sir!' exclaimed Papa Bobbsey, in stern tones. "'The dog stopped, wagging his tail. "'Then he sat down on the path and calmly waited. "'Mr. Bobbsey walked toward him. "'Oh, don't! "'Don't whip him, Papa!' exclaimed Flossie. "'I don't intend to,' said Mr. Bobbsey. "'But I must be stern with him, or he will think I'm only playing. "'Go back!' he cried. The dog stretched out on the path, put his head down between his forepaws. "'He, he looks sad,' said Freddy. "'Maybe he hasn't any home, Papa.' "'Oh, of course a valuable dog like that has a home,' declared Bert. 
but maybe they didn't treat him kindly, and he's looking for a new one,' suggested Nan, hopefully. "'He doesn't seem ill-treated,' spoke Mrs. Bobbsey. "'Oh, I do wish he'd go back so we could go on.' Mr. Bobbsey pretended to pick up a stone and throw it at the dog, as masters sometimes do when they do not want their dogs to follow them. This dog only wagged his tail, as though he thought it the best joke he had ever known. "'Go back! Go back, I say!' cried Papa Bobbsey in a loud voice. The dog did not move. "'I guess he won't follow us any more,' went on Mr. Bobbsey. "'Hurry along now, children. We're almost at the trolley.' He turned away from the dog, who seemed to be asleep now, and the family went on. For a minute or two, as Nan could tell by looking back, the dog did not follow, but just as the Bobbseys were allowed to make a turn in the path, up jumped the animal and came trotting on after the children and their parents, wagging his tail so fast that it seemed as if it would come loose. "'Is he coming?' asked Flossie. "'He certainly is,' answered Bert, who was in the rear. "'I guess he wants us to take him home with us.' "'Oh, let's do it,' begged Flossie. "'Please, Papa, please,' pleaded Freddy. "'We haven't got Snoop now, so let us have a dog. "'And I'm sure we could teach him to do tricks. "'He's so smart.' "'And so he's coming after us still,' exclaimed Mr. Bobbsey. "'Well, I don't know what to do,' and he came to a stop on the path. "'Couldn't we take him home just for tonight?' asked Nan. "'And then in the morning we could find out who owns him and return him.' "'Oh, please do,' begged Freddy and Flossie impulsively. "'But how can we take him on a trolley car?' asked Mr. Bobbsey. "'The conductor would not let us.' "'Maybe he would if he was a kind man,' suggested Freddy. "'We could tell him how it was and how we lost our cat.' "'And our silver cup,' added Flossie. "'Well, certainly the dog doesn't seem to want to go home,' said Mr. Bobbsey, "'after he had tried two or three times more to drive the animal back. "'But it would not go.' "'Go on a little farther,' suggested Mrs. Bobbsey. "'By the time we get to the trolley he may get tired and go back. "'And if we want to lose him I think we can by getting on the car quickly.' "'But I don't want to lose him!' cried Freddy. "'No, no,' said Flossie. "'We want to keep him. "'He can run along behind the trolley car. "'I'll ask the motorman to go slow, Papa.' "'My, this has been a mixed-up day,' sighed Mr. Bobbsey. "'I really don't know what to do.' The dog seemed to think that he was one of the family now. He came up to Flossie and Freddy and let them pat him. His tail kept wagging all the while. "'Well, we'll see what happens where we get to the trolley.' decided Mr. Bobbsey, thinking that there would be the best and only place to get rid of the dog. "'Come along, children.' Freddy and Flossie came on, the dog between them, and this seemed to suit the fine animal. He had found friends now, he evidently thought. Mr. Bobbsey wondered why so valuable a dog would leave its home, and he was very much puzzled as to what he should do if the children insisted on keeping the animal, and if it came aboard the trolley car. "'There's the car!' exclaimed Bert as they went around another turn in the path and came to a road. Down it could be seen the headlight of an approaching trolley, and also the twin lamps of an oncoming automobile. "'Look out for the auto, children!' cried Mrs. Bobbsey. They stood at the side of the road, and as the auto came up, the man in it slowed down his machine. It was a big car, and he was alone in it. "'Well, I do declare!' exclaimed the autoist, as the engine stopped. "'If it isn't the Bobbsey family, twins and all!' "'What are you doing here, Mr. Bobbsey?' "'Why, it's Mr. Blake,' exclaimed Mr. Bobbsey, seeing that the autoist was a neighbor, and a business friend of his. "'Oh, our train was held back by a circus wreck, so we walked across lots to the car. We're homeward bound from the seashore.' "'Well, well, a circus wreck, eh? Where'd you get the dog?' "'Oh, he followed us,' said Mrs. Bobbsey. "'And we're going to keep him, too,' exclaimed Flossie. "'And take him in the trolley with us,' added her little brother." "'Well, well,' exclaimed Mr. Blake. "'See now, I have a better plan than that,' he went on. "'Why should you folks go home in a trolley when I have this big empty auto here? "'Pile in all of you, and I'll get you there in a jiffy. "'Come, Dina, I see you too.' "'Yes, sir, Massa Blake, I's here. Can't lose old Dina.' "'But we lost our cat, Snoop,' said Flossie regretfully. "'And we nearly ran over an elephant,' added Freddy, "'bound that his sister should not tell all the news.' "'Well, get in the auto,' invited Mr. Blake. "'Do you really mean it?' asked Mr. Bobbsey. "'Perhaps we're keeping you from going somewhere.' "'Indeed not. Pile in, and you'll soon be home.' "'Can't we bring the dog, too?' asked Flossie. "'Yes, there's plenty of room for the dog,' laughed Mr. Blake. "'Lift him in.' 
but the strange dog did not need lifting he sprang into the tonneau of the auto as soon as the door was opened mr and mrs bobbsey lifted in flossie and freddie and nan and bert followed then in got papa and mamma bobbsey and mr blake started off this is lovely said mrs bobbsey with a sigh of relief she was more tired than she had thought it certainly is kind of you mr blake said papa bobbsey i'm only too glad i happened to meet you are you children comfortable yep chorused freddie and flossie and the dog we're holding him so he won't fall out explained flossie she and her little brother had the dog between them on went the auto and with the telling of the adventures of the day the journey seemed very short soon the bobbsey home was reached there were lights in it for sam the colored man had been telephoned to to have the place opened for the family sam came out on the stoop to greet them and his wife dina here we are cried papa bobbsey come flossie freddie we're home flossie and freddie did not answer they were fast asleep their heads on the shaggy back of the big dog end of chapter four